Before the 1980 Alaska Lands Act, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologists did reconnaissance throughout Alaska to help select lands for new refuges, parks, and monuments. In 1979, the Mitrofania to Sutwick Islands survey team covered nearly 400 miles using a 16-foot Avon inflatable boat with two outboard motors. They explored the entire irregular mountainous coastline, including all bays except Kajulik Bay and all named offshore islands, and estimated abundance and distribution of marine birds and marine mammals. On July 4th, Fish and Wildlife Service biologist Edgar Bailey and myself, volunteer Nina Faust, were dropped off by helicopter from the NOAA ship Surveyor on the 11,099-acre Mitrofania Island, south of Chignik on the Alaska Peninsula. The helicopter relayed loads to the initial base camp and placed two gasoline caches on islands on the way east to Sutwick Island. With calm seas, we boated nearly 10 miles late in the evening to survey Spitz Island on Mitrofania's south side. Small, rugged, with steep high cliffs rising straight out of the ocean, Spitz Island was quickly surveyed in fading light. Over 10,000 kittiwakes and a large mer colony were found. We landed on a small beach and stayed till 12.30 a.m. Numerous ancient murlets and fork-tailed storm petrels started calling. In the dark, we motored around the island and heard leeches, storm petrel calls, and a peculiar twee-twee that flashlights revealed to be downy ancient murlet chicks. By 3 a.m., we were back in camp. Arctic foxes were introduced to Mitrofania in the 1930s, which is why we found low numbers of most seabird species on Mitrofania. Also, brown bear trails crisscross the island, so bear predation likely also keeps numbers low. In the upper valleys, a female willow ptarmigan fiercely defended her nest. Surveying around the island, we were surprised to find a Pacific walrus resting on shore. In calm seas, we moved camp from Mitrofania and surveyed Brothers Islands on the way into Cuyukta Bay. The most numerous seabirds on the low islands were black-legged kittiwakes and tufted puffins. Unfortunately, going into Cuyukta Bay was nasty. A front was approaching and fierce high winds blew off the mountains into our faces. We found a safe campsite, but the next day strong winds blew out of Windy Bay. We headed into Spray and Chop all morning, noting numerous murlets, guillemots, and harbor seals. One Cuyukta Bay Island spire hosted an eagle's nest with two eaglets. Departing Cuyukta Bay, high winds and five to six foot waves out of Windy Bay hit us on the stern, making a tricky, unnerving run. We finally camped in calm waters in Sweater Bay. The next day, we hastily loaded the boat with a fast rising tide and sudden willy blowing down Sweater Bay. After rounding Cape Icti and Seal Cape safely, we were blown out of Devil's Bay, memorable for its wicked-looking craggy ridge spires. In Warner Bay, 50-knot gusts blasted the boat. Camping on a spit there was impossible with the raging willy -wos. We ended up in Necessity Cove at midnight, with no place to camp, just as we ran out of gas. Every landing for a campsite was thwarted by the fierce winds. We filled our tank and chose the only alternative, cross five miles of open water to Chankluit Island's south side. In the dark, with the winds on the stern, we crossed. At 2 a.m., with glimpses from a full moon, we landed on a beach open to the Pacific Ocean and set up camp. By afternoon, the tempestuous northwest wind calmed. However, when a southeast breeze started up, we left the south beach at 3.30 in the morning, just after the high tide when the swells were gently surging on the beach. We found a good campsite at 6 a.m. on the island's safe north side. Chancluit had two old cabins from the fox farming era and an overpopulation of voles that had caused severe erosion. We could also see the magnificent Castle Cape from the island's high ridges.
We left Chankluit Island for Atkulik Island, nearly 16 miles over open ocean. It is a rugged, steep island with no good campsites. Our camp was on a tiny hangnail area of boulders and rocks crammed right up against the cliff where falling rocks would hopefully not land on our tent. Tufted puffins, murres, and black-legged kittiwakes were the most numerous seabirds on that kulik. The island's interior has two picturesque lakes and a large gull colony. From at Kulik, we surveyed Kak, a steep island with lots of ground squirrels. Ed hiked the island while I held the boat in a protected surge hole. He did not find birds. A night survey did confirm some ancient murlets. Continuing on to survey Nakchamek Island, we almost had to spend the night in our survival suits in the old cabin we had found. Luckily, the fog lifted just enough to make it back to our Atkulik camp. With calm seas, we motored next from Atkulik across 14 miles of ocean to Unavikshak Island, where we counted over 200 sea otters in the kelp beds. We picked up a gasoline cache near dilapidated fox farm buildings where we camped. Foxes had died out, but ground squirrels were common and seabirds scarce. The next day, we crossed 15 miles of open ocean to 21,142 acre Sutwick Island, which has resident brown bears. Bears had dug up all the tufted puffin burrows on an offshore stack. Surveying around Sutwick, few seabirds were found, but many bears. Weather was bad with several tent days. One morning, we heard noises at the boat. From the tent door, we saw a brown bear sitting in the boat on its haunches. Ed grabbed the shotgun, yelled and screamed at the bear to scare it away. The bear bounded out of the boat and charged the tent, head down. Less than 10 feet away, Ed shot the bear with double ot buck, which turned it from the tent. A second shot in the rump kept it running to the furthest corner of the beach where it remained all day. After patching four puncture tears in the main chamber, we left that evening for a nearby beach. The bear left too, slowly, painfully climbing the ridge. We were very fortunate because with no radio communications, there was no help for emergencies. The next day, with me sitting on one patch and pumping up the air chamber in transit, we crossed to Kumlik Island. Kumlik has dangerous rocks and reefs surrounding it. We also watched a bear swimming to the island. The following day, we explored Gull Island and Hook Bay. On our last day, we stopped at Anguvik Island, but found nothing. We then headed to Chignik Lagoon and up the Chignik River to the Fishing Game Weir, where we caught a plane to King Salmon on July 29th.